Shiny boy, nani. Welcome back to this channel. Hey. Okay. <laughs> hello everyone welcome back to the channel and if you're new here thank you so much for stopping by this is a channel that is all about christ we talk about christ we talk about everything that concerns christianity thank you so much for joining us and if you're family welcome home welcome home so today i don't really know what to call this video or this series but this june i wanted us to go deep um and talk about our history in Christianity, our Christian heroes, people or men of God who have fought um, everything to preach the word of God back then when they were still upper state, but they fought. Our black men of God who were called and they persevered and they paved the way for us to receive Christ freely. Um, and if we are talking about this topic, <clears throat> we cannot not mention Obab Nicholas being um, and I wanted to make this video because our our channel is about educating and talking and growing together and starting conversations within Christianity to help one another so I thought it was important for us to know Abandu how do I put it Abandu who walked this journey before us here in South Africa and and just be inspired and motivated and motivated to say i can also walk this journey until my last day i can walk this journey it might be hard it might be this and that but i am going to serve christ against all odds and these people that i'm going to be sharing um this month these are people who fought everything with every power they had to serve god so like i said we are definitely going to start with Babu nicholas being i am even so honored to share his history and share his story right so if you don't even know who nicholas Bengo is he was a reverend he was born on the 5th of september 1909 in a in Guazul Natal. I, there's a lot to to his story but i'm gonna pick there and there so that you don't get bored and sleep the aim is to educate you not to bore you right right so like i said he was a an evangelist he was going from place to place preaching the word of god and he was the founder of the back to christ movement africa back to christ movement and he was one of the black first black men to preach christ saving people from their sins there were churches back then that were preaching and preaching but he was one of the first black men who preach that christ saved that christ died for you that you can live a righteous life right right okay so i think i've explained a little bit of who he was um so let's get right into how he was saved how he received christ his conviction so i'm gonna share this in a bit of a story so that it doesn't bore you he he grew up in lutheran church right a that's how he grew up in his home. His father actually was a pastor in one of the churches um, in Lutheran Church. So one day, um, I don't know what he went to Kimberley to do, but he was in Kimberley and there was a crusade and he decided to go with his girlfriend. He was like, babe, let's go. They went to this crusade and there were there was two young men of God from America that came with this crusade. And he's saying, and then they started to preach, right? And they opened in Isaiah 53. Do you read that verse. They opened in Isaiah 53. And he says they ministered so powerfully. And he says he likes how they unpacked verse by verse of that chapter and just explaining it word for word. What does it mean? And then he says, the way they preach, he, he just felt like he could just go in front and receive Jesus Christ. Like, right? Because, and also, this was something that he didn't know from his church. They never preached Christ saving people. They never preached salvation, right? So, how these two pastors were explaining Isaiah 53, it, it, was, it was so powerful. He said, there were two reasons why he didn't just run up front and receive jesus one because he was afraid his girlfriend would say oh like winner 
right you know that shyness when you're going to your friends i mean this revival and you're like oh no i just can't go in front and two he was also afraid that he could be the only one or the first one to stand up but because what they had preached was so powerful after the service he asked to see the pastors and then he talked to them they explained the verse even more to him and that's when he was like you know what i want this thing and also another point that he mentioned is that what got him interested in this thing was also how these pastors were preaching it with so much assurance like they were so sure about what they're saying and also so happy and joyous about what they were preaching about right so when he had um the conversation with the pastors they talked about the verse and then he knelt down there and there and he accepted jesus christ as his personal lord and savior and in his mind he's saying he was thinking okay something should happen i just received jesus and like he wanted to fill something and i think one of the men of god caught it spiritually because he asked him are you feeling anything and he was like no and he made an example to him to say if <clears throat> oh to say to him do you have money in your pocket and he was like yeah i do and he said do you need to feel the money to know that it's there or you just know it's there and he was like i just know it's there and he was like that is how christianity is that is how salvation is you just know you have it and he says just right after he explained it to him in that way faith just came into his heart okay so the he went back home the following day um as usual he wanted to start smoking he couldn't he wanted to drink he couldn't and he was like oh this this is what i was expecting and i think god was faithful to him because it was in his heart to feel something and then when he realized i can't smoke and drink this salvation is actually powerful and then he says he knelt down there and then he was like thank you lord for jesus and thank you for sending him to die for us okay then he went back home um went back to his church in lutheran church and he testified this is powerful he got his first miracle and his salvation and when he tried to testify in his church they were like uh, uh, uh. pause what 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 are you talking about there's no way a person can be saved and live a righteous life while they're still here on earth so they do not take it because that is not what they believed in right so from there there was a lot of things being said about him because he shared this testimony that i'm now saved i'm a child of god um christ has died for me he has died for my sins um i'm now a new creature and they were like what are you talking about so because this was new to them they did not accept him i'm gonna jump straight to um his calling how he was called to minister to preach the word of god to preach salvation right so what i'm gonna do is he says he had a revelation so i'm just gonna read right um how they quoted him here on what the vision was right so this is how he was called to ministry right so he says the lord explained to me that i was authorized to serve him but i did not know how to go about it he showed me a great ocean to which he brought me then i heard the voices of many people crying in fear of death they were all under the water and their hands and feet were bound with chains but they were trying to set them, themselves free they all had black faces when i listened i noticed that one could hear their voices they were speaking in all african languages and yet i was i was not able to understand them they were all pointing at me for i was standing on dry land and they said we are dying we are dying we are perishing help us i felt so great i felt a great sympathy and wanted to help them all out of there but they were many as the sand of the sea hole the more i tried to help them the more i sank into the water i called on to the lord jesus appeared and lifted me out he showed me an open Bible and said, This is the word of life. Study this word. And through the words of this book, you will break this 
fit you break these people free from the chains of sin in which they have been bound for centuries i wish you to do this right so he had a vision that is how he was called into ministry and then like i said his story is, is is so long and it's so powerful and right from there he went he just started preaching right like i said he started the the big two africa big two christ movement and he preached all over south africa and outside of south africa and he preached the word of god so powerfully people were getting saved people were receiving jesus back when they were still upper date right so now i'm gonna jump straight to how he was called back to god how he died okay on october 1985 um Wab nicholas Bingo, he died um he died at the hospital and we what is funny is he actually what i would how i would put it is he actually prophesied how he was gonna not how but he that he was going home because one of his last sermon um, that he preached was called going home it was titled going home and then he preached that sermon and then in 1985 october he died so what was also interesting is that he left a letter of things that they should do and shouldn't do um in his funeral which means which just says that he knew that he was now going home um he was going to be with the father and he was like he wrote all these things down and things that they should follow so i don't know i maybe i cut it too short but i wanted to just make it short and want you to go and research and get more his story is so powerful it's so encouraging he did a lot of things for the kingdom of god so I just wanted to share a little bit of who he was, how he got saved, how he was called, and how he left us to go to to go be with the Father. So that is the history of Bab Nicholas Bengu. Please, please, please do take time to research about him. It's Nicholas Begingosi Bengu. Just research about him so that you can know what the things he did <clears throat> for the kingdom of God and how he was going around. And also, I did want to share um one of the stories that i heard about him about him and his wife um i heard i heard this from um evangelist and jason they say one time he was going with his wife to preach like he was preaching all over south africa and one time they were on their way to preach to another province and they were going with their child and apparently their child got sick and uh, so bad that he or she died just there and there and he didn't return home to go and bury his daughter but he was like you know what we're gonna get a box right here put my daughter here make a little prayer for her and just go straight to preach the word of god and he was like this was the devil trying to stop him not to go and preach to these people this is a man that wanted to preach the word of god against all odds and i if you're watching this i encourage you if there were people like Bob nicholas being who preached the word when they were still apartheid when white people didn't even want to see us but he was followed by a multitude of people they couldn't stop him because he was so cold and he was forceful he was like i'm gonna preach the word whether white people like it or not whether they are stopping me or not but against all odds i'm gonna do my calling because i saw that vision i saw those people crying saying help help and jesus sent me to release these people from hell release the people from all this change that that they are bound to you too can do it i was encouraged when i because i always knew about Ubab nicholas being but i never actually found out what, who he was and what he did and just check his history but after i read everything i was like oh my goodness i have no reason not to push against all odds to preach the word like paul says we should preach 
in or without season and that's exactly what bob nicholas did he was preaching the word of god against all odds he was ministering to people he was helping people he was so dedicated to his calling so please do take the time to read more and get um, your story more so that you are also encouraged to say whatever comes my way i will never stop doing my calling i'll never stop preaching um the good news of jesus christ i'll never stop fighting for salvation fighting for the kingdom of god and standing also standing because it is important as much as you are preaching but he was also standing in the right standing with god he was doing his calling but also he was living a righteous life so i hope you do check his story out and just get to understand his history more and be inspired and be encouraged to say let's walk this journey me and you until our life if bob nicholas Bengu did it we can also do it that's what i said i said if he could do it under upper date under white people who are pre or pressing black people under this and that i also can do it right so thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you do check this video out also i hope this story gave you a little bit knowledge about Bob nicholas being i will see you on the next video where i'm talking about another general that did a lot for the kingdom of god thank you so much for watching this video i love you for watching um don't forget to comment like share and subscribe and if there's another christian hero another man of god who did great things for the kingdom of god that you know please comment down below I'll definitely check them out and research more about them um i love you so much for watching don't forget to like comment share and subscribe did i say that already anyway i love you i'll see you on the next video i love you so much but jesus loves you more bye